What's up guys? It is John from Side Hustle Experiment. In today's video, we're talking about prep centers. I'm gonna tell you a kind of a nightmare story about the one I'm currently working with right now. Um, I'm actually finding another one. I just selected one. And I wanna go through the whole process of finding a prep center. Uh, mainly in this video, we're gonna talk quickly about the benefits of using a prep center and then 10 questions that you could ask your prep center plus a bonus question. And down below, they will there will be um, a link if you want the questions. Um, so you could print them out or look at them on your phone or your computer while you're talking to the prep center so you don't forget to answer the questions. You could do so, it'll be on Gumroad, it's free. You just have to enter whatever uh, info Gumroad wants. I don't think you could just do name and email. I don't know, you just have to do whatever they want. Um, I tried to pick the least amount. Um, so let's just get into it. If you're new here, I'm a six figure Amazon seller. I do online arbitrage, I do books a bulk book operation and um, basically transferring all to online arbitrage. My goal is to help you guys make money selling on Amazon. So if you're into that, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, take a screenshot, tag me at side hustle experiment on Instagram. It'd mean a ton. Let's just get into it. So basically I have been working with a prep center since February in a tax free state. So let's cover the benefits. One, benefit number one, if you're working with a prep center in a tax-free state, you don't have to pay sales tax on your items. This could be a huge advantage. The sales tax where I live is about 6%. So if I bought something for $100, um, I have to pay an extra $6 in sales tax. So if I use a tax-free prep center, um, it would just cost me $100, but I'd have to pay them to prep the item. In most cases, it ranges anywhere from a dollar to about $2 from what I've seen. Um, so even if it was $2, um, I'd still be making four more dollars because I didn't have to pay $6. I don't even have to touch the item. So that's one of the biggest benefits of using a tax rate prep center. Number two, your time is worth a lot more than putting labels on a product. Trust me, I've done it uh, a lot uh, before getting a prep center. You do not want to have to be tracking these packages. I mean, you want to track them, go to the prep center and all that stuff, but you do not want to have to be labeling everything. You should. Your time is spent best sourcing and finding more profitable items. Uh, so those, let's just leave those. Those are the two biggest benefits uh, we're going to talk about. So let's get into the nightmare story. So basically I was working with a prep center. Um, it was recommended by a bunch of people that I know, we're all friends. Um, and basically they were doing awesome and then everyone started to recommend them. And basically, uh, including myself, only people that are pretty much like almost inner circle with me that I talk to regularly, uh, I was recommending them. Um, and basically everyone started to use them. It was going great for everyone. And then basically the times, the time they were taking to ship stuff out started to get slower and slower. And I was just kind of like, huh, maybe it's just kind of, they're just in, you know, working through some stuff. But then like I got like five DMs uh, yesterday on Instagram and people are like, hey, is it slow for you too at the prep center? And I was like, it is. And I kind of felt like shit because I recommended them. Obviously before this, they were doing a great job. So it's really hard sometimes to help you guys and make recommendations because it's not really in my control 100%. I just kind of go based on my experience. So I was having a good experience. They're doing a good job for me. So I recommended them, but no one was mad about it. It's just sometimes that's what happens. Um, so I had to go through this whole process, long story short, to find a new prep center because I'm kind of stuck. I don't want to do the prep. Um, and a lot of prep centers are actually full because there's a huge need for them. So I literally am going to go through the process of what I did, um, walk you through that. And then the 10 questions, uh, and a bonus question that I asked the prep centers, to uh, do an interview because with this first one, I just went all through email. I never talked to them. I basically just sent an email. Do you have space? They're like, yes. I sent them $25 or whatever the fee was. 
uh, to process. And then they're like, okay, cool. Uh, and then I just started sending them stuff. So the process went like this. I basically Googled states with no sales tax, made a list of those states. There's five of them, I think. Um, and then just took it state by state. So example, one of them is Ohio. So I would just do Ohio prep center and just start going through the list and go from there. Um, and just made a Google doc. Um, this is totally not necessary, but for me, it was an extra step, but for me, I wanted to keep a list of everything and notes that I have. So if I do need another prep center, I don't have to redo all this work. So once I have the Google doc, um, I have it forever and I have notes and everything, how much is per unit, all that kind of stuff. So, Basically, I'll never have to worry about that again, and I can keep adding to it. Um, and then I just started sending emails. Basically, like, hey, um, the title would be, like, uh, looking for a new prep center. I was like, hey, my name is John Muscarello. I've been uh, had an Amazon business for about four years now. Uh, we're doing online arbitrage mainly, and we're, lo we're looking for another prep center. Do you guys have any availability? I would love to chat with you if you do. Uh, and just put, uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, John. And just put my phone number at the bottom. Uh, some of these sites will have uh, email addresses on them. Others, you'll just go through a contact form. So basically, I did that for about nine or 10. Uh, a couple of them wrote me back, said they were busy. One person called me, um, and I'm actually going to go with them. Uh, and basically... I think one of the things you also have to look at is kind of like response time. One of the biggest issues with the one I currently have is the communication is like really bad. Um, so basically you like how, if I send, like I sent a bunch of emails and the one I'm going with basically called me within 20 minutes of me sending the email, uh, compared to all these other ones that took, uh, a day or two to get back to me. Not that that's a big deal. I'm just saying like, that really impressed me that literally in 20 minutes, I got a phone call um, and walked me through pretty much everything, what they're all about. So let's just get into the questions, all right? If you have any questions before, uh, put them below and I'll answer them for you. So I have them up here, so I'm kind of going to be looking up there. So question number one, you want to ask them, get, can you give me an overview of your business? And I would also suggest asking them in this question, in this order. All right, so basically all you're doing here, uh, you just wanna know if they have any experience. Are they an Amazon seller? Some people are. Um, other people were Amazon sellers and then just started doing prep. Um, that is kind of nice because obviously they understand how Amazon works um, because they've been an Amazon seller. And you just really wanna gauge like how long they've been in business. Um, and just kind of, you want this to be a conversation because you're going to be working with these people. So you want to make sure that you guys are kind of aligned and are on the same page. So just kind of ask them, overview your business, how long you've been in business. And there you go. Maybe if they've only been doing this for like two or three months, you might not want to do that. Up to you. Some are great. The one I was working with, uh, has only been in business, I think a year or so. And it was fine for the first six months, but then it kind of got out of control. Um, and I guess maybe that is the case because they've only been in business a year. The people I'm going with, I think I've been doing it uh, six years, I think. Uh, so obviously they know how to like take on new clients and when enough is enough. Um, number two, uh, is there a minimum amount of units I need to send a month? So some prep centers will have a minimum. Uh, some of them I were looking at, uh, they had a 500 uh, unit minimum, which I could hit. Um, but when I first started, I wouldn't be able to go with that prep center. Other ones have a tiered system where if uh, that depends on pricing and stuff like that. So the more you send, the cheaper it gets. But you're definitely going to want to know if there's a minimum because if you don't hit it, um, I know some were under a hundred, they charge you like $3 an item or something crazy like that. Um, uh, because they don't want people who are just going to send a hundred cause it's a lot of work. Um, number three, are there any items you don't accept? So when I was going through the website, some prep centers don't do shoes, some don't do grocery. 
because they don't want to put like expiration dates and stuff like that. Uh, some don't do bundles. Some don't do oversized stuff. Uh, so you want to know right off the bat um, what they will and will not accept. Uh, I know a lot of the preps I was looking at, they don't like shoes or they have additional costs for shoes. Um, I don't do much shoes, but for mostly uh, some of the, most of the stuff I'm doing is in not those categories. So it's not really an issue for me, but if you're selling a lot of grocery and stuff, you might not want to, you might not be able to use a certain prep center. So just know that. Number four, what is the price per unit? Super important here. There are some prep centers that have a flat fee, which means if I'm sending this bottle, um, it's gonna cost me a dollar no matter what, whether I have to put tape on top, put a poly bag in it, or do anything to the unit, uh, unbox it or whatever, um, it's a standard dollar. Uh, some um, prep centers, the one I was using currently, if you want items poly bag, the bag is an extra 20 cents. If you want items bundled, it is a dollar a unit. So if you wanted two of these, it'd be $2 plus 20 cents for a poly bag plus 50 cents for a bundle. So a bundle would cost you 270. So super expensive. Um, so that's something to know if you, uh, if they use boxes to send your stuff, most of them try to send it in the boxes that they come in, um, but others don't and they'll have to charge you for a box. So know that. Um, and the last part of that, when are you billed? Some bill, uh, I saw by monthly, so they'll do like the 15th and the 30th of the month or the 1st and the 15th. Others um, were saying you have to pay us uh, before we send the shipment out. Uh, there's all sorts of different stuff. Some bill monthly. It just really depends. And you want to know how you're going to have to pay. Um, what is number five? What is the typical turnaround time? So this is important. A lot of them say 24 to 48 hours. Uh, how true that is, I don't really know. Um, I'm guessing that's what they try for. But this one seemed to be around... Um, that and from a couple of other people I talked to that I know um, actually use them, uh, they said it's pretty accurate. So, you know, that is a good sign. So just make sure you know what the typical turnaround is. Ask them about Q42. Um, this way you know how much you have to send in, how many people, you know, you just wanna know this stuff. Uh, number six, how are they typically handling um, sending shipments to Amazon. So basically what you're asking here is when I send my stuff to your warehouse, what happens? Are you sending it out right away? Are you waiting till I have a hundred units, then you ship it out? Um, are you shipping it out right away if it makes sense? Um, or are you doing it on a specific day? Like every Wednesday you send all my stuff out, whatever I have at your warehouse. Um, so knowing that is super helpful because Let's just say they're doing it a certain day for me. I want to be around for them uh, in case they have any questions or stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, ask them how that works. Number seven, what happens, this is important, if inventory gets lost in their warehouse? Couple reasons you want to know this. A lot of prep centers don't really have an answer for this. Um, and I know the one I'm currently working with, I knew a couple of people who had stuff lost there and they were basically like, well, I, I don't know. I don't think it ever came here. There was no reimbursement or whatever. Uh, the current company I'm going with actually said that they, if it is their fault, like if UPS said, hey, we dropped it off and they received it and it says that, and then for whatever reason they break it or can't find it or whatever, they are going to reimburse me. So I think that's fair. They say it rarely happens, but this is, I don't know, this is kind of the first prep center I've ever seen address the issue. Um, number eight, how are returns handled if I order the wrong item or something goes weird? Um, so basically this, it depends on the prep center you're using. So basically if I ordered, uh, five of these and I thought it was black and it's actually silver, 
I would need to return it. So some prep centers will charge you uh, per item. So basically they'll be like, hey, if you have to return it, we're gonna charge you a dollar or two for the item and like I'll mail them or send them a label to ship back to whatever company. Um, others do it for free. Uh, it just really depends. And yeah, it just really depends. Um, so you're gonna wanna know that. Um, number nine, um, you're gonna want to know if they integrate with any software. So they use inventory labs or whatever else you might use to list. This is important because you're gonna wanna know how you have to um, get your stuff to them. Um, a lot of the times it will be a Google Doc, but I prefer someone who uses inventory labs because it will list directly into inventory labs and it's a less step for me to have to add it to that or have to create the shipment myself in Seller Central. I know a bunch of them said that. They ask you to do that and then they kind of work on the shipment. Um, so know what software they're doing or what you have to do to get the shipment rolling and going. Um, number 10, this is the last one before we get to the bonus. Um, this is super, super important. Um, what's the best way to communicate to you and the team? You wanna know, uh, is it best to call them? Is it best to text them? Is it best to email? Uh, do they have a Slack channel or whatever they want to do? Because if you need to get a hold of them quickly or something's wrong or whatever, um, if you wanna get a hold of them, like you should know um, how you can and what's their typical uh, response process. Do they get back to you within the day or whatever, just so you have some idea in your head. And the last one, I'm saying this is a bonus tip, and I think this is more important, and it will really make you stand out between the other people, and that is, how can I be a good client, or what do you see some of your best clients do? So with this question, you're just kind of saying like, hey, I want this to be a partnership, right? It's not like, hey, um, you work for me. I mean, they kind of do, but I want a partner in this because I want someone who's going to do right by me. I want to make their lives easier so they can make my life easier. And it's just a good mindset to have. You want a partnership. If something goes wrong or maybe you enter something wrong, um, for them to be like, oh, hey, like you entered this wrong or to catch a mistake or whatever, you just want to be sure like you have an open communication. Actually, the prep center I'm going with was just kind of saying, hey, um, some of our people, the best people um, make notes of, for example, if there's, let's say, this bottle right here, the Amazon listing was like bottle of liquid and that's what it said and that's all you put in the spreadsheet. They said that if you could put, hey, it's a bottle of Sprite in parentheses or something, it will help them find the actual item and make sure it matches to what you're trying to do. They also said, what did I write down here? Um, if you're doing bundles, um, they want to know how many you're actually sending. So instead of saying it's five bundles, they want you to say 10 items are coming, but it's really five bundles, just so they know how many items should be there before they bundle them up. So little stuff like that makes things just go a lot smoother, so you don't have to worry about stuff like this. Um, so that is kind of um, the 10 questions, 11 questions. I asked uh, prep centers, um, you could, I'd probably suggest you do this over the phone. I would not email this to them. Um, talking to them on the phone too is a really great way to get like a vibe. Uh, the person I was talking to was super, super nice. I kind of felt like they just answered all my questions. It almost made me feel like they really cared. Um, so I'm super excited to like try this out. Again, I'm not making any recommendations based on what happened the first time around. Plus, I haven't used them yet, so we will see what happens with this. But if you want a this list of questions, um, there will be a link below. You can get it for free. Uh, you could just um, type it, print it out, bring it up, ask the questions on the phone. And that's all I got for you guys today. So if you could please like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Or if you could share it, it would mean the world to me. Even if you just took like a screenshot on your phone, shared it on Instagram or whatever, um, I would greatly appreciate it. 
And I will see you guys in the next video.